Okay, so here's Studio Series 86 Autobot Hot Rod. Uh, here is the packaging. I think it's very nice. I like this Transformers movie logo down here. Uh, the side of the box has some Hot Rod art and the 86 logo. Uh, the back shows Hot Rod in both of his modes. And uh, apparently Hot Rod lights the darkest hour. Uh, we see it comes with a backdrop and there are 29 steps to the transformation. And the other side has another piece of art with Hot Rod's face there. And notice it's a Voyager class. Anyway, let's get this guy unboxed. Get my trusty knife and there is only one piece of sellotape to uh, cut today and that is there. Open that up and then we'll slide him out. And we'll slide out the other pieces and have a tip. There we go. Is there anything else in there? That appears to be it in the box. We have our typical warning sheet. This time it's folded in half. Uh, does it say it will generate anything today? No, just that this time it has small parts that are not for children under three years. We also have an intriguingly coloured instruction booklet. Um, I'm not sure what colour I'd call that, maybe a brownie red. Uh, it's a long style one today. It's not the old uh, square, so that is a very long concertinaed instruction booklet there. Um, does it show you how to go from one mode to the other? No, it has all your uh, alternate modes and things on the back, such as his visor there, um, how to use his saw, his different weapons, his hands, different weapons on his alt mode and the rest of the transformation. A nice instruction manual. I like that there's a lot of extras there. Marvellous. We also have the fancy fold-out display piece. I myself, not much of a fan of these, but I can see why people might be. I think I'd rather keep mine in the box. And then finally, we have the figure itself. Um, these are held in by these are rubber tie things, so we'll start by getting these accessories out. Oh, that's held in by a rubber tie thing as well. There's a matrix, let's see if we can pop that out first. Don't want to break these things, do we? There we go, a bit of thumb action from the other side. Blue thing. Another blue thing which just launched itself across the table. The pizza cutting hand attachment, which really spins. A weapon. That one's tagged in. All right, so we're gonna need the trusty snippers here for this weapon. There we go, there's the other weapon. We'll snip this blue starfish down here. There we go. Ooh, it's sort of a flimsy plastic. I was expecting more of a hard plastic, but it's sort of flimsy, rubbery. And now let's uh, get Hot Rod out. We have four ties here. We have a tie at the bottom on the legs. We have one on each arm. One there. One there, and the one across the chest. Which doesn't want to cut, obviously made out of um, the finest plastics known to man. 
Anyway, I think he should be now free to come out of the box. I think feet first is going to be the best way to do this. There we go. Then forwards at the knee there. So, looks a bit uncomfortable for him. Oh, here he comes. Oh, marvellous. Oh, he's very light. I expected him to be heavier than that. I don't know why. These legs don't rotate. Anyway, so in the hot rod box for the unboxing, you have your hot rod figure. He needs to be looking at the camera. You have a blast effect, a smaller blue blast effect, another of the same blue blast effects. It's very important. Matrix of leadership, his pizza cutter weapon attachment, and a pair of blasters. So that's the unboxing done. Let's move on to the review and showcases. Oh, and we mustn't forget the transformation. So here we have the man of the moment and the figure everyone's gushing about, Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And I think he's a very impressive looking figure. Probably of all the figures I've ever seen, this bot mode does look fantastic. Uh, there are a few issues and we'll get to those later, but on the whole, he is great. Okay, so we'll start off with a look at the face. And I think you will agree, he looks absolutely smashing. And I love the way that inside this head, there is a visor, which will come out and just flips out and goes down. And there you go, a wonderful pair of 1980s blue shades. Anyway, let's put those away and crack on with the review. So here we can see Hot Rod from the front. He looks very nice. Here he is from the side, minimum backpack. Here he is from the rear, looks very good. Part from that bum area. <laughs> here he is from the top and everyone's favorite underneath. The paint apps do look very good, the orange has come out very well, the silver looks very nice. A little bit worried that this silver on the head might fade or rub off quite easily over time. And otherwise the paint apps do generally seem well applied, especially this logo here and the flames on the chest there. The sculpted detail is fantastic, we cannot complain a bit about that. The face, obviously, amazing. The neck detail is incredible. I love these arms, I love these hands, I love this waist area, and I really like the detail on his feet and legs down here. I look, I look, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the back is not quite as good as the front, but who displays their figures? from the back. From the front, there are no hollow areas or those weird looking holes. Like I said, the only holes I can think of is uh, just the top of the knees, top of the knees, top of the uh, calves here, uh, the siege ports, the weapon ports, and the back of the figure there. Now the joints and articulation on this guy are fantastic. The head moves forwards and backwards and all the way around. If you can see that there. The arms move all the way around, although the spoiler will foul. The arms will move up at the shoulder and also there's a little bit of butterfly movement but not a lot. Um, they will twist at the elbow and also move up and down and the hands will also twist at the wrist. The waist will perform a full 360. I wouldn't recommend trying this yourself on your own body. The legs kick over forward and not quite all the way back. The knees are double jointed and will sit back like so and will even over kick forward like so. They also rotate here at the top of the thigh, which is a very stiff joint, which I don't really like using. Feels like something might break. The ankles will rock and also the feet will move forwards and back. So that's a lovely amount of articulation for posability there. Now size comparison wise, here he is himself and here he is with Cliff Jumper. 
cliff jumper does look very small indeed there next to hot rod and also a lot more basic looking than blocky hot rod definitely looks a lot more like his movie version now there's a few issues i have in robot mode one that this joint on his leg does not like to stay clipped together it likes to keep pinging open as you can see there not a fan of that also i find these bits on the back of the arm a little too loose i feel like they should slot into those ports a little more but they are minor nitpicks really also i have broken one of the tabs off or it came broken not quite sure uh, you can see that tab there which is very small is actually missing off this side which prevents the robot transforming perfectly and the joints won't be so great so i've got on to my retailer about that for a replacement but keep an eye on that little tab yourselves now hot rod comes with a plethora of accessories he has a blast effect um, a couple of more smaller blast effects his two weapons which will plug to his hands nicely his pizza cutter saw and of course the matrix and we'll see him using those accessories in my showcase section of the video so in robot mode i think hot rod is one of the best looking transformers i've seen in a long time and that is saying something anyway let's have a look at his alt mode now okay so let's transform hot rod so step one is we pull the back piece down. Step two, we rotate it around. Step three, we fold it down. Step four, you pull the whole back piece backwards. Step five, we list we list we lift the inside of the back piece upwards. Like so. You probably won't stand like this. Step six, we lift that panel inside up. Step seven is we spin this rear assembly around. Step eight is we put this panel back down. Step nine, we pull this entire section all the way down. Step 10, we rotate the head around. Step 11, we push the head inside. Step 12, we push everything back up. Step 13, we lift this panel back up. Step 14, is we rotate the waist, the waist, the waist 180 degrees. Step 15, we pull the legs apart. Step 16, we undo these red box areas on the legs. There's one. There's two. Step 17 is we fold the inner parts out. These are a little stiff on mine. Here we go. Same with the other side. Should clip in nicely. Step 18, we fold the feet inside the leg. Now step 19, we're going to fold this leg into here and close this over it. This can be a bit awkward. Make sure you uh, bend this right at the knee. Here we go, there's one. One, make sure you bend at this part of the knee, not this part. Give him the old crab legs. There we go. Now step 21 is we just put these legs together. Now step 22 is we close the back section down onto the legs. Easier said than done I find. There's two clips here and two pegs just inside there which will clip in 
it's not that easy. A bit of fiddling seems to do the trick. Oh. There we go, it randomly just pinged together. Now step 23, we open this hood bonnet area again. In step 24, we fold out these little arm pieces. Step 25, we rotate the exhaust pieces around. Step 26, we're going to swing this arm around and connect that exhaust to the back one. We'll do this for both sides. One side done. Now, you will notice that there's a pin there and a hole on the inside of the arm here. And they will slot together. So remember your exhaust slots. And then you'll get a big gap here under the window so you have to sort of squeeze it up together. Now step 27 as we open these red panels from inside. And then step 28 is we close the front back up. Step 29 is we fold these small panels in. They should clip together. But today I'm getting some gaps. Do a bit of fiddling to close your gaps and your transformation is done. Okay, so Hot Rod in his alternate mode of a Cybertronian sports car of sorts. Here we have a lovely three-quarter view. Um, here he is from the top, the front, the side, the worst view, the back, and I know you guys like to see underneath. Now the paint taps on mine are pretty good. Uh, this front section here appears to be painted orange. Uh, I don't have a lot of fade on my paint anywhere and they've done a pretty good job of painting within the lines. There's some other paint apps here which look quite nice. I do like this orange. And this magenta -y red here, I believe is also painted over the blue clear plastic. Uh, I think the reason they got the magenta is they didn't prime with the correct color. They've just sprayed this red over the blue, giving it a purpley hue from underneath. That would be my professional artistic take on things anyway. Uh, the spoiler is yellow plastic. These chromed areas are quite nice. However, there's my breakage there, which we don't want to talk about. And the Autobot symbol, the Autobot, I should say. The Autobot symbol is quite nicely done along with these uh, lights here on the front. Now sadly, sadly they've made this bit in yellow plastic. If it was red, it would have been amazing. God knows why they went with yellow for that because it really stands out. And on the box art, it's actually red. So I guess originally it was going to be red and someone decided to save a couple of quid and do it in yellow, which is a shame but are not a deal breaker. Some guys, I guess, may decide to paint that red, but uh, that won't be me. The sculpted details are very, very nice. I actually like the entire shape of the car. I think it's fantastic. The engine detail is very nice. The sculpted detail for the lights is very nice. The exhausts and uh, pipes are very nice. The spoiler, very nice. And the wheels are a little bit bland. They are also that weird plastic. Can we please go back to rubber tires? It's so much better than plastic wheels. Anyway, the entire car mode is very solid. However, we do have a few gappage issues. Um, these sections here seem to lift a bit and don't sit entirely flush with the window. There's a fair few gaps along here, which I don't know if you can see. These headlights do not sit flush. Uh, gaps again this side. However, 
if we didn't have to worry about the gaps, this would be 10 out of 10 for me. However, the gaps and the yellow and the uh, easily broken bit there really knock this figure back a bit, I believe. But that's just my opinion. Um, he does roll. Not great, but he does roll. It's probably to do with all the gaps. If he sat more flush, it would probably be a much better roll. Uh, there are no other moving parts, but there are areas to store your weapons and accessories, which you'll see in my showcase video. Um, sadly, the only bad area of the car is the rear, where his feet are hanging out. But who really is going to be paying a lot of attention to the rear? Yeah. <laughs>